Welcome back to the Williams Real Estate Channel. I'm your host, Jordy Williams. And tonight we are unpacking, unpacking rent vesting. Rent vesting explained. So basically, rent vesting is renting the family home, house of residence, and then investing across multiple markets, more affordable markets, or a higher return higher cash flow return, also investing in areas at the start of their growth cycle. So to dig deeper into the pros and cons, firstly, on the left-hand side, the, the benefits of rent vesting is you can live in a more desirable area. Typically, it can cost a third, if not a quarter of the cost to rent the family home if you were to rent it versus if you were to go out and take your loan out today, let's say six to seven percent, and own it after you add up the interest holding costs, maintenance, upkeep, strata, if applicable, rates, insurance, all of which is non tax deductible. You pay it out of post tax dollars. So if you rent the same equivalent property, typically in a metro market such as Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, you'll be able to live in the most desirable suburbs for up to a quarter of the cost than it would if you were to try and own it. More flexible to move where you want to live. So especially personally, I'm a rent vester. I rent where I live in, in a Sydney, in a West and we've moved a couple of times as we've got a growing family. Instead of buying a unit and then renovating it, pumping all the money into it to then upgrade into a terraced home, renovate, scale up, and then into a, a family house, you can easily just ring a removalist and two days later, you're in a, another family home. So more flexible, you may want to even go live overseas, go to London, go live into state, it's a lot more flexible. You're not tied to that one location, that one asset, and you don't have that big fat loan overhanging yourself. So you can allows you to invest in other markets and allows you to be more free flowing and more flexible when it comes to your living areas. You can enter the property market a lot sooner. So personally, I got into the property market a lot earlier than I would have if I tried to keep saving for many years to build up a larger enough deposit to get into the market. I mean, I started by bought my first investment up in the Hunter Valley in Maitland for 240000 At the time, I used the first home buyer's grant. So I didn't rent it out for six or 12 months while I renovated it. So I got into that asset with a 5% deposit, that's 12 grand. So you can get into the market earlier, get on the property ladder, start compounding your wealth, building your wealth, rather than saving up for many, many years to get a sizable enough deposit together to buy a large asset to live in. So get in the market sooner is, a pro is definitely a positive. Increase your borrowing capacity by up to 50 to 60%. So run your numbers with your mortgage broker. But if you are taking out investment loans only rather than a loan to buy your home owner occupier place, the banks typically lend you 50 to 60% more because they're taking in the rental income as, and as, as additional income, but they're also assessing the debt as tax deductible debt. It's not, you can write off the interest on tax if you're investing. If you're buying a family house, you can't. You're paying with post-tax dollars. So it automatically increases your servicing or increases your borrowing capacity. Therefore, you can buy up to 50 to 60% more property. So that is a very powerful um, positive for rent vesting. That flows onto the next, all costs are tax deductible, including a portion if you work from home. So if you work from home and you have a, a study and you have um, 
a business, a side hustle, you can claim a portion of your rent off your tax bill. So that's another positive that you may want to discuss with your accountant. So that's very powerful, which you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do if you had a homeowner occupier place. Diversify your capital across multiple markets. This is another big positive. So right now we've got Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide really in the midst of their upturn and they'll probably top out around, I'd say between 2027 to 2028. They'll come back probably 20 or 30%, at which point Sydney and Melbourne will then start performing as the outperformers for the next seven to eight years as of around 2027 and onwards. So we're now investing heavily into Melbourne and Sydney regional New South Wales and regional Victoria in preparation for their next upturn come post 2026. We're no longer looking in the markets of Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide. So we're diversifying our capital across multiple regions to capitalize on, on the growth cycles. If you put all your eggs into one basket and buy a home and occupy a place, you're backing one horse that's going to perform and not all areas and locations perform continuously outperform. Typically, markets go through a period of anywhere between nine to 10 years of flat to no growth. They'll then hook into an upturn where they go into an upturn for about three to six years where they'll go up anywhere between 100 to 150%. So we like to target markets that have been stagnant for a long period of time, seven to eight, nine years, because it's only a matter of when they're going to kick into the next upturn which is why we're investing now down in Melbourne, certain pockets in Sydney and regional New South Wales and regional Victoria, as we're finding these areas that have been stagnant since really 2016, 2015, 2016. So nearly 10 years now. So we're very excited and we're diversifying in those markets and we're steering away from other markets. So we are able to do that by rent vesting. We, we, rent where we live and we diversify our capital across multiple markets to ultimately get the growth right before they hit their upturns. Build a scalable property portfolio. So that's another positive. I mean, when I first went to the bank as an example, the bank would only lend me 400 grand. Today I'm carrying over three and a half million in debt. So the only way I was able to get there is by buying in markets at the start of their growth cycle, buying positive geared properties with strong yields in areas that will gentrify, spreading the capital across multiple markets, buying as a value investor, so buying property for less than replacement costs. You can't really do that if you're trying to buy a family home, typically overpay, you pay well, well over the intrinsic value of, of a property. Um, next one, prevent getting stuck with servicing. So it's very easy to get stuck with servicing if you over leverage into one asset. So if you're taking a million dollar plus loan out that doesn't have any rental income, then you're solely relying on your personal income, be it your day job, your business to fund the cost of, of that property. So if you diversify across multiple markets with a high cash flow, you'll prevent yourself from getting stuck with servicing. Cons for, for rent vesting. So you don't own the place. So it's a bit of a mindset change. You don't, um, you don't own the actual place, obviously, if you're renting. So, I mean, m once you're a landlord and you, you know how landlords operate, they ultimately want to have a tenant that pays rent on time and maintains their property well. Um, landlords, I, I don't have an issue with have, having a landlord because I am a landlord myself. So, um, but I mean, I get it. Some people want to, own the place they live, but that's more of an emotional thing. You sort of got to get over that. Uh, you don't receive CGT tax exemption. So if you have a owner occupy a place and you hold it for a certain period of time and you have a capital gain, when you go to sell, you, you currently under the 
current tax laws, you don't have to pay CGT, um, which is a positive. However, the amount of interest that you'll be paying to the bank would pretty much be a lot more than your capital gain if you're looking to flip um, homeowner occupier places anyway. Uh, you may miss out on grants. So if you're looking to invest straight away, you may look, you may miss out on grants. But I mean, the opportunity loss of a couple of grand saving on stamp duty versus the opportunity of losing out in capital growth from the market anyway, I would rather just get into the market and get on with it to keep leveraging and growing and building your portfolio rather than trying to, you know, save a few grand and stamp duty off your first um, home owner occupier place. So yeah, sure. It's a con, but I mean, there's other things you will miss out on if you're just trying to save a way to get a government grant of five, 10% deposit and no stamp duty. So things to consider and you got to compete with the rental market. I mean, now it's a tough rental market, but, at the end of the day, if you've got rental properties, um, a, like a diversified portfolio, it really doesn't make a difference because you make a lot more money out of your property portfolio. If you build a substantial property portfolio than any rent that you would really live in these days. So I'll give you some examples. Bondi Beach in uh, Sydney. So classic... Um, style brick veneer block sold in May 2024. Two bed, two, two bath, one car space, nearly $1.9 million to buy that. So, I mean, the intrinsic value of a unit like that is around that 500,000. That would cost around, yeah, 500 grand per unit to, to build these days. 450, 500 grand, depending on the finishes, but this is a pretty stock standard brick veneer type of asset. So first off the bat, I mean, one, nearly $1.9 million. So it's nearly well, more than three times its intrinsic value you got to pay. So that's something to consider if you really want to do that. And then once you do that, you, you need to stump up a good 20% deposit. So you'd be needing at least three, 400 grand to get into the asset as a deposit. So how long will that take to save up? I mean, it'll take many years to save up, I'm sure, even on a big income. And then once you're into it with a $1.5 million loan, it'll be costing $2,200 a week in principal and interest repayments at 6.7%. And over the total loan term, you'll be paying three and a half million um, repayments. And the total interest you'll pay over 30 years is $2 million. That's non-tax deductible. So versus if you rent in Bondi, you'll be paying nine fifty for something on the left, two bed, two bath, one car space, or 875 for something on the right, similar asset, two bed, one bath, one car space. So for, I mean, a third of the cost, you could still live in that same suburb, live in that nice desirable area. For a third of the cost, that's just on the mortgage and then you don't have to pay strata, rates, upkeep, any of that stuff. And... I mean, how long is a two-bedroom unit going to last you? If you've got a growing family and you you, can, you can't really add a second room or develop it or do anything like that, there's very not much you can really do to improve the value. So you're pretty much just backing that market to perform. Sure, you can rip out a kitchen and bathroom and add a bit of uh, sweat equity, but there's really not much fat in um, doing a renov renovation like that. So why not just rent it? Rent it for a third or a quarter of the cost and then get your money to work harder in other markets and then be able to borrow more and keep growing. So Five Doc. So I live in Five Doc. This is a pretty similar situation to, I guess, you could where I currently uh, live. Uh, we've got a two-bedroom, two, or two bedroom, 
two bedroom house at the moment, but uh, something similar to this. If we were to buy it, it would cost you know over four million bucks. Uh, we'd need a a solid seven eight hundred grand deposit, thirty year loan term. It'd be costing five thousand over five grand a week in repayments. Total repayments of eight million. Total interest to the bank four point six million over thirty years. So versus if you rent it, I mean this same property is for rent currently. So I feel sorry whoever bought that and decided to just rent it out for two percent yield, one or two percent yield, thirteen hundred a week for the same property versus I mean five grand just in repayments. Um, something similar on the site. This is something similar that we rent. We currently rent for seven seventy a week. We're we're currently paying unders. I'd say it's probably worth about eight fifty, but it's worth anywhere between three to three and a half million. So a third, if not a quarter of the cost to rent in a desirable area in the inner Western Sydney and then be exposed across 17 other regions across three different states is what I would prefer to do personally. And I would not, not be in the situation I would be today if I don't rent vest because if you hook yourself to a big loan to buy something like this, um, you just be, be a slave to the bank. And really, the risk, I believe, is is a lot higher, especially when we go through the next land-driven downturn when unemployment will get to you know, 10 11%. Rates may stay high and inflation may stay high for a period of time until, I mean, inflation comes down and the economy is completely in a next slump. So I would not like to be holding an asset with like this with a big loan and having all my eggs in one basket. So I'm in a similar situation, nearly three and a half million debt, but it's spread across 17 assets that cash flow that pay for themselves plus more. So we basically live for free because the rental income that comes out of the portfolio pays for where we rent. And we get to live in the desirable area for a quarter of the costs. And we get to claim some of the rental in, uh, costs on a tax deduction because I've got a um, work from home set up. So definitely works out better based off the numbers to rent where you live and invest across multiple markets. So that's Sydney houses. So same goes for down in Melbourne, Q. So Q is a very desirable area. It's like a double bay um, down in Melbourne. I mean, terrace home, three bed, two bath, one car space, um, sold for in August 2024 this year for two over 2.2 .2 mil. So cost you 2,700 a week for payments, 4.2 million bucks full loan term, over 2.4 million interest to the bank, which is non-tax deductible. You'd have to come up with a good 500 grand deposit Whereas if you just rent in queue, it'll be costing you know, eight, less than 850 bucks. So eight between 830 to 850. Like look at that beautiful house on the left, three bed, one bath, one garage. Nice place for 850 a week. So it's even probably a bit more desirable than actually buying a, um, a place like like this terrace in in Q. So definitely makes sense even in Melbourne to rent vests. Uh, Brisbane, I mean Hamilton, a really nice desirable area. If you were to buy a house, I mean it's starting to make probably more sense to buy in say Brisbane, but still the numbers stack up to rent vest. 1.3 million sold in April 24 for three bed, one bath, two car, garage. Classic Queenslander style, you'd need a good three, four hundred grand deposit to get into an asset like this. Million dollar loan costing you fifteen hundred a week in repayments. Whereas you could rent for half the cost and um, not have to have the maintenance upkeep rates of maintaining the property. So it even makes sense to rent vests in certain pockets in Brisbane. 
that's if you want to live in a desirable area. I mean, there's a lot of more affordable markets in Brisbane where it probably doesn't make sense to rent vests. But if you want to live in the premium suburbs, right next to the premium schools, premium catchments of where all the schools are, then renting definitely makes sense. And then putting your money in assets that return a higher yield at the, po at the start of their growth cycle in other regions. Perth, so Bitten in Perth, 2.4 million, four bedroom, two, two, um, two bath, eight car spaces. I mean, that's a pretty nice place. You'd need a good five, 600 grand up front and then a $1.9 million loan costing you two over 2,800 a week in repayments. Whereas if you just rent in the same suburbs or similar suburbs, anywhere between 800 to $1,100 a week. So um, yeah, a third of the cost, a third to a quarter of the cost once you add up all the interest holding costs, the rates, strata, upkeep, maintenance, insurance, all of it you don't have to pay just a disclaimer i mean this is just my thoughts my story of what i'm doing and as what has definitely helped me but this is just general information and by no means personal or general advice as you know i'm a buyer's agent so if you need help building a sustainable property portfolio of 10 plus properties within 10 years i'm your man i can help you build a solid residential foundation portfolio they'll help you retire from the workforce work part-time enjoy the fruits of your labor and support you and your family for a lifetime so if you need help hit me up any any, any day of the week happy to chat if you have any queries questions or any feedback shoot me an email i am always available until next time, thanks for watching.